Jack Fortescue, Acme Studios. So Acme was founded by uh, a number of recent graduates back in 1972. They were looking for somewhere affordable to live and work um, and they found empty properties in East London. They approached the local authority and said, can we have some of these properties? And we're told you've got two options. You can squat them and I'll evict you or you can form yourself into a housing association, I'll give you the key. Um, so they discovered that it was £70 to form a housing association. They figured if they could get five friends, that was seven, ten pounds each, they were laughing. Uh, in retrospect, they said that's the hardest thing they've done in 46 years, trying to get five friends to cough up 10 quid. Eventually they did, and were given a, a shop, a derelict shop, um, which they did a very good job of turning around, were then given a second property. Uh, the council officer got rather impressed with this. Uh, said, uh, I've got a few more properties, you don't know anyone else who might want a unit, do you? And within three years they had 300 houses in East London that they were managing as an artist-run housing association. Primarily, now, we provide um, affordable studio space. We have a small amount of uh, housing, or work-live space, and we also offer residencies and awards. Unbinning all of it is the uh, nature of affordability which as our charitable objective and that is to provide artists who are in necessitous circumstances with space which is suitable for their means um, which means low-cost space unaffected by rises in uh, the general prices in the city because often artists are immune to those things anyway um, so it's affordable as defined by what an artist can afford to pay not by what the current business climate determines. I think, like a lot of organisations, getting something permanent or long-term has always been a challenge. And back in 1976, I unearthed a document the other day from 1976 that finished with, by saying, ACME have identified that permanent property is the answer to uh, uh, ensuring that we can set affordable rents in, in the long term. It took until Another, well, another 20 years until we finally got a permanent property. Uh, for a long time it existed on what would now be called meanwhile spaces, short term, that's often a year, maybe five years if you're lucky. Uh, it's a very inefficient way to, to manage space, it's a very expensive way to manage space and it doesn't offer security or any of the benefits that we know artists want, need and then turn into benefits for those communities. I think the shift in the last 10 years or so in a new way of working, which is to work with housing developers um, to build studios into schemes, which means defining what an ideal artist studio looks like, um, rather than taking a space that already exists and cutting it up, thinking from scratch, what does a studio need to have? What does it not need to have? Because we're trying to keep costs down. What does it look like? How big is it? Um, how do you get in and out? Um, and the culmination of that was a project we did out in just on the edge of London, uh, which was a standalone purpose-built artist studio building, which posed a question we've never thought of, which is what does the outside of an artist studio building look like? Um, which, was, which was interesting. <laughs> Uh, but it won three Reba Awards, so the architects obviously got it right. I think it's, it's always more difficult than you think, and it always takes longer than you think. Um, trying to keep an artistic practice going whilst running any sort of artistic uh, group, whether that's a gallery, whether that's a studio building, whether that's a project space, whether that's just some sort of peer support thing, obviously that impacts on your practice unless that is your practice. So there does have to be a trade-off. Um, certainly the founders of Acme packed in their art careers very, very quickly to focus on, on running the organisation. There are other um, people out there, directors, who, who've managed to juggle the two, but they'll, I'm sure they'll agree it's a challenge. So don't underestimate how difficult it's going to be. Don't underestimate how long it's going to take, um, but also you know, don't worry too much about the end point because it probably won't be where you think it's going to be. 
Um, so having a good idea and having a good aim and good set of values that you that you want to stick to is, is crucial. And stick to that and, you know, it might take you in a direction you never thought you'd go in. You might end up a million miles away from where you started, but if your values are true, you'll be able to sleep well at night.